And now, the next thing, and we, we are going to allow, I keep wanting to say former President uh, Madison, but no, once a president, they're always a president. We can't help that. Um, but we want, we're going to ask President James Madison, <coughs> who's one of the framers of our own constitution, to spend just a little time with us, very little time with us, <laughs> but getting us some hope for the future, because hope is a little hard to come by these days, isn't it? President, President Madison, thank you for being with us, and what, what, what can you tell us that we ought to know let him have the whole screen, you know, for a guy he's dead, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that you young folk understand what it is to be of an advanced age. I myself, if you realize, have just passed the age of 272. So, <clears throat> let me tell you, thing, the first hundred years are the easiest. I think about hope and, of course, I think about fear and the issues that come into this. What great thing can I tell you in your modern times from our time? Nothing specific, of course. I can't tell you how to deal with this issue or that issue within your world. But I think it valuable to take a pause and think about the universality of much of what we look at. It always feels like now is the turning time of history. If we do not succeed now, then history shall go downhill. The country is doomed if we do not elect our candidate to the presidency. How many times have we said this? And how many times has the country gone down the hill? Uh, <clears throat> the thing is, our opponents are people who see the world a little bit differently from us. And that doesn't mean that they're inherently evil. And yet, we have a tendency to cast aspersions upon those whom with we disagree. And I caution you that how often is what you disagree with the means in which they wish to accomplish something as opposed to the actual thing that they wish to accomplish. I think that if you spoke to most of the people you disagree with, you would find that they want a democratic nation where, where all people have equal rights and that the government largely stays out of individual people's businesses. And how do we accomplish this? And of course, how do we accomplish fairness in society so it is always a challenge. And is our time, is your time, any worse than our time or any other time? What we were hoping for, what I hoped for more than anything else, is that we should win the Revolutionary War and become a single country. My fear was that we wouldn't win the Revolutionary War and we would all be strung up a very serious concern back in the day. I hoped that I would survive the plague of yellow fever in Philadelphia in 1793. The very plague in which Dolly Madison's, my wife, future wife's husband, died. In three months, one out of every ten people in Philadelphia died from the plague. It was a horrendous thing, incomprehensible in the modern day. Ten percent of the population gone within three months. There were carts going the, through the streets of Philadelphia, men yelling out, bring out your dead, bring out your dead. It wasn't I am blessed that I have survived that. I hope that we have come past those plagues. I wished, I hoped, I worked my self half to death to accomplish the goal of writing a constitution which could be ratified by all 13 colonies that we should truly become a single country. 
This is my greatest hope because the, my fear was that if we did not ratify this Constitution, we should fall squabbling among ourselves, divide into several countries which would then become Europe. Eternal warfare. War after war after war after war. I do not have to tell you that, that in the Napoleonic War, France lost more men than the United States has lost in every war it has ever fought up until your time. That is what we were terrified of and our hope that we would avoid that constant eternal warfare. I believe to a huge degree we have accomplished that goal. That we have not suffered the way most countries have suffered in warfare and, and I bless we are blessed is all I can say. So hope and fear are opposite sides of the same coin. If we truly wish to accomplish something, of course, what we need to do is talk to the people we don't agree with. If you spend all of your time talking to people, the 50% of the country who is on your side, you will accomplish what? Nothing. It is only when you can cross over and talk to people who see the world differently, who have different experiences, different values, until you can cross that divide, then you end up running in circles and accomplishing nothing. So this is my admonition, my prayer for you. Talk to people you don't agree with. My most famous quote, I suppose, was, if men were angels, no government would be necessary. But we are not angels, and so we need government, and we need to work together for the ultimate goal that most of us cherish among all things. Individual freedoms and independence, and the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Thank you so much, sir. I know you came a long way to be with us today, and you've given us a lot to think about. Thank you very much. And that was President James Madison. His visit here was arranged by Bill Lewis. <laughs> These things happen. Thank you so much. Thanks, Bill, for your work in getting the President here. And now, with a complete change of pace, you know, that was very good. That, that was very stirring. And I did not realize all of that. It's funny, you think you know, you know you know what happened, you know what's ahead, but you don't, you don't. So it was really, really good to have that reminder, and I feel it right there in my more than ample bosom. Um, anyway.